Hey y'all, welcome to Russ's Chipotle Kitchen. Today, we are going to talk about one of the most delicious, most decadent, most amazing chocolate pies ever, and I'm talking about French silk. Look at that. Absolutely delicious, so creamy, and it's so easy to make. Here's how. You just need six ingredients for this easy pie, and it goes together in maybe 10 minutes and then let it chill. Overnight is best, but you can chill it for as little as three hours and you are ready to go. It is impressive, it's delicious, and it's so easy to make. Perfect for the last minute dessert that you need for your holiday table or to take to a potluck or whatever. So let's get started. You're gonna need um, a cup and a half of sugar, a teaspoon and a half of vanilla, um, five tablespoons of dark cocoa, um, dark cocoa powder. And I use Hershey's Special Dark, but you can use, I know that like King Arthur has a dark cocoa powder and so do some of the other ones. Now, I know somebody's gonna say, well, can't I use regular cocoa powder? And yes, you can, but the flavor isn't gonna be quite as intense. You need a cup of butter at room temperature, or softened room temperature. My room temperature right now is about 65 degrees, so I was just checking it to make sure that it was softened enough to use. And if you can like push it with your finger and you know and kind of mold it, then it's good. It's soft, soft enough to use. Um, and eggs, which need to be at room temperature. This is really important. Now let's just say. Um, the eggs in this recipe are raw, and that does bother some people. You can get pasteurized eggs that are perfectly safe. Um, I use heavy-duty organic eggs, free range. I feel like they're okay, I've never had a problem. But um, especially if you're immune compromised or you're pregnant or something like that, you may want to find the um, pasteurized egg product, but you'll need four or the equivalent of four large eggs. And that needs to be at room temperature too. And then you're gonna need a pie crust. And to make it easy, I just bought a crumb crust. Normally, I like just a pastry crust with this pie, but um, today I just, I'm using a crumb crust. So, and, and that makes it quick and easy, and it's delicious that way too, no reason not to. I was trying to wait for the dogs to start bark stop barking, but if I do that, we're never gonna get this made. So they just seem to be very barky today. So you're gonna put your butter in the um, your mixer bowl and start mixing it. Once the butter is broken up a little bit, you're gonna go ahead and add your sugar. And then you're gonna beat it until the mixture isn't grainy at all. And this can take 10 minutes sometimes. stop it every once in a while and scrape down the sides so that everything has the opportunity to get mixed up. And then just turn it back on and let it go. It's getting creamier and um, softer, but there's still a lot of sugar crystals in there, so it still needs to go. Okay, <clears throat> so this has been going for about 12 minutes and you can see the texture of this is very light and fluffy. If I take a little bit between my fingers, I can, there's just a little bit of um, sugar crystals, but it's so tiny you can hardly feel it. Once it gets to the point that it's, there's hardly any feeling of sugar crystals at all, then you can go to the next part, which is adding the cocoa powder. And when you add the cocoa powder, I do it on low speed so that the um, powder doesn't go blow back all over you. 
and all over the kitchen. Want to go in there and again scrape down the sides every once in a while to make sure that all the cocoa powder and the butter is down in the bowl. What you're looking for now is you want the cocoa powder to be completely mixed in and you don't want to see white streaks in the cocoa powder. So be sure to scrape the bottom and sides often and this will take maybe two to three minutes. At this point, it's nice and fluffy. Everything's mixed in. Um, I have a little bit here on the side that's not mixed in, but I'm just going to pull that down. And it's time to start adding the eggs. Now, when you add the eggs, you want to make sure, again, that they're uh, room temperature. And if it's winter time, um, you want it to be kind of a warm room temperature. I usually cover them in hot water uh, for a couple of minutes, maybe five minutes, just not boiling water because I'm not trying to soft boil them, but just hot tap water. Um, leave them in there for maybe five minutes and they'll be just about the right temperature. Okay, so we're going to start the uh, mixer and we're going to add the eggs one at a time and we're going to continue to mix until each egg is incorporated completely into the um, mixture. This is not a hard pie to make, but it does take a little bit of time from just the amount of mixing that you have to do. stop every once in a while and scrape down the sides. All right, at this point we're going to add in the vanilla. done when it looks like chocolate whipped cream. So we're going to take this down and take the beater out. All right, so if you can see the texture of that, it's just like chocolate whipped cream. And what I'm going to do just as a last step is to take my rubber spatula and fold underneath and just make sure that there's nothing stuck to the bottom that isn't mixed in. At this point, if you take up some with a spoon and just take your finger and run it through and lick it, there will literally be no sugar crystals. It will actually have the texture of whipped cream and that's exactly what you want. Now we just need to fill our pie crust, spoon it in there, and smooth it out as you're spooning because you want it to get into all of the edges and crevices of your pie crust. Now, this is a purchased crumb crust, as I said, but you can use a regular pastry crust if you prefer. I um, have actually a couple of recipes here up on YouTube. Um, if you use a regular pastry crust, it's going to need to be baked before you fill it. This pie does not get baked. Um, it Do not heat it at all because what's going to happen is the butter will melt and it will turn to soup. This is not a pie for a summer picnic. Um, it's literally, you've got to keep it cold because it will melt. And here it is. You can see the filling is rich and fluffy. It looks like whipped cream. And um, I'm going to take this now and chill it for overnight is best, but at least two to three hours before you cut it. And so I'll see you back here tomorrow morning. 
Good morning, y'all. Here's our pie. Um, it's been overnight in the refrigerator, and now it's the next day, and um, it's all just firm and perfect and creamy and delicious. What I'm going to do now, and you would do this right before you served it. You wouldn't want to do it like at 9.30 in the morning like I am, but um, you do this right before you serve it, and I'm going to put whipped cream on the top. Now, if you put Cool Whip on the top, um, there's no reason why you couldn't do that in the morning because that's stabilized. Or if you put about a teaspoon and a half of instant vanilla pudding mix, I know it sounds crazy, but instant vanilla pudding mix into the whipping cream when you whip it, um, it will also stabilize so you can go ahead and put your whipped cream on there early in the morning. I don't, normally I would have had the whipped cream already made and not showed you how I did it, but I thought y'all would be kind of interested in the fact that I really like to use my mom's old Dover beater for, um, for whipping cream. I don't even know if you can buy these things anymore, but it's just so easy to go in there and just uh, twist it around and get it going. And it makes the most delicious whipped cream. So uh, I just wanted to show y'all. I thought it was kind of cool. So if you're doing it like this by hand or with a hand mixer, what you'll do is you'll whip it until it starts being a little bit thick and then just add your sugar a little bit at a time. Um, you can see that it's starting to get like really thick. And one of the things with doing it by hand like this that uh, some people have a hard time with with an electric mixer is you can go too far with whipped cream and you'll start turning it into butter. And you're probably not gonna do that with a hand mixer. Well, with this kind of hand mixer. Now all we have to do is to Take our whipped cream, put it on top. This is a very rich pie, and so I suggest that you, if you put the whipped cream on top rather than just putting a dollop of it on, um, you keep it kind of thin because this is a very, very rich pie. And the adults are definitely gonna want coffee with this. Now, we've got our pie, and we can leave it like that. Or we can go ahead and garnish it with a little cocoa or a little chocolate. This is another um, easy hand crank machine that uh, belonged to my parents. It's super old, but it's a grater. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the chocolate here in the hopper part of the grater and then close it up. And I assure you, it may look a little worn and used, and it is because it's from the 1930s, but um, it is clean. So, and then we just take it around like this and our grated chocolate just goes right on top of the pie. So pretty. And there is our French silk pie, all ready to go. All right, let's cut into this and take a look. This should make eight pieces. Um, you can probably get 10 pieces out of it because it is very, very rich, but um, definitely eight. And I would suggest that you clean your knife off in between each cut because it'll, the pie will come out prettier that way. Let's see if I can get this out of here. In one piece. Let's see if I can get this out of here in one piece. Y'all know the problems I tend to have. I think I'm gonna try this. I brought this with me just in case. Oh, here we go, here we go. Here's that pie, look at that. Just gorgeous, so delicious. And here's our pie, all ready to take a bite. Look how thick this French silk filling is. It's so creamy. Y'all, it's delicious. Y'all, look at this. Can you see how just utterly buttery and creamy that is? Oh my gosh, it's so good. It melts in your mouth just like butter because it is pretty much butter. And um, it's so chocolatey because of that uh, dark cocoa powder. It gives it extra chocolate flavor. This 
is a showstopper and it's perfect for the holidays, but it's so easy. You can have it any day of the year. So I hope you'll try it. I mean, how could you resist? I hope you'll love it. And I hope you'll come back next week. We are going to be doing some delicious stuff going into the new year. I'm excited about 2023. I hope you are too. And um, yeah, leave a comment, leave a thumbs up, and let people know about Restless Chipotle TV on YouTube. And I'll talk to y'all later, okay? Love y'all. Bye.